11.1 respiration using energy every living cell needs energy in humans our cells need energy for contracting muscles so that we can move parts of the body making protein molecules protein synthesis by linking together amino acids into long chains cell division so that we can repair damaged tissues and can grow active transport so that we can move substances across cell membranes up their concentration gradients growth by building new cells which can then divide to form new cells transmitting nerve impulses so that we can transfer information quickly from one part of the body to another producing heat inside the body to keep the body temperature constant even if the environment cold all of this energy comes from the food that we eat the food is digested that is broken down into smaller molecules which are absorbed from the small intestine into the blood the blood transports the nutrients to all the cells in the body the cells take up the nutrients that they need the main nutrient used to provide energy in cells is glucose glucose contains a lot of chemical energy in order to make use of this energy cells have to break down the glucose molecules and release the energy from them they do this in a series of metabolic reactions called respiration like all metabolic reactions respiration involves the action of enzymes aerobic respiration most of the time our cells release energy from glucose by combining it with oxygen this is called aerobic respiration this happens in a series of small steps each one controlled by enzymes most of the steps in aerobic respiration take place inside mitochondria we can summarize the reactions of aerobic respiration as an equation glucose plus oxygen carbon dioxide plus water the balanced equation is C6H2O6 plus 6O2 to 6CO2 plus 6H2O anaerobic respiration it is possible to release energy from glucose without using oxygen it is not such an efficient process as aerobic respiration and not much energy is released per glucose molecule this is called anaerobic respiration and means without anaerobic respiration happens in the cytoplasm of a cell not in mitochondria yeast a single celled fungus often respires anaerobically it breaks down glucose to alcohol glucose alcohol plus carbon dioxide 2c6h2o6 plus 2o2 rightward arrow 2c2h5o plus 2co2 plants can also respire anaerobically like this but only for short periods of time some of the cells in your body particularly muscle cells can also respire anaerobically for a short time but they do not do this in the same way as yeast they make lactic acid instead of alcohol and no carbon dioxide is produced this happens when you do vigorous exercise and your lungs and heart cannot supply oxygen to your muscles as quickly as they are using it the muscle cells are able to release at least some energy from glucose without using oxygen just to keep them going until oxygen is available again by help from glucose lactic acid keywords aerobic respiration chemical reactions that take place in mitochondria which use oxygen to break down glucose and other nutrient molecules to release energy for the cell to use anaerobic respiration chemical reactions in cells that break down nutrient molecules to release energy without using oxygen aerobic respiration involves chemical reactions in cells that break down glucose to release energy uses oxygen no alcohol or lactic acid made large amount of energy released from each molecule of glucose carbon dioxide made anaerobic respiration involves chemical reactions in cells that break down glucose to release energy does not use oxygen alcohol in yeast and plants or lactic acid in animals is made much less energy released from each molecule of glucose carbon dioxide is made by yeast and plants but not by animals 11.2 gas exchange in humans 
gas exchange surfaces. Two substances are needed in aerobic respiration. They are glucose and oxygen. Animals get sugars such as glucose from carbohydrates which they eat. Plants make theirs by photosynthesis. Oxygen is obtained in a different way. Animals and plants get their oxygen directly from their surroundings, either from the air for terrestrial, land living, organisms or from oxygen dissolved in water for aquatic, water living, ones. Carbon dioxide is made. This is a waste product and it must be removed from the organism. In organisms, there are special areas where the oxygen enters and carbon dioxide leaves. One gas is entering, and the other leaving, so these are surfaces for gas exchange. They have other characteristics which help the process to be quick and efficient. The gas exchange surfaces have to be permeable so that oxygen and carbon dioxide can move easily through them. They are thin to allow gases to diffuse across them quickly. They are close to an efficient transport system to take gases to and from the exchange surface. They have a large surface area so that a lot of gas can diffuse across at the same time. They have a good supply of oxygen. Keywords Gas exchange, the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide into and out of an organism's body. Gas exchange surface, a part of the body where gas exchange between the body and the environment takes place. The human breathing system Structures involved in the human breathing system the most obvious are the two lungs. Each lung is filled with many tiny air spaces called air sacs or alveoli. It is here that oxygen diffuses into the blood, so the surface of the alveoli is the gas exchange surface. Because they are so full of air spaces, lungs feel very light and spongy to touch. The lungs are supplied with air through the windpipe or trachea. Keywords Alveoli Tiny air-filled sacs in the lungs where gas exchange takes place. Trachea, the tube through which air travels to the lungs, it has rings of cartilage in its walls, to support it. The nose and mouth. Air can enter the body through either the nose or mouth. Hairs in the nose trap dust particles in the air. Inside the nose are some thin bones which are covered with a thin layer of cells. Some of these cells, called goblet cells, make a liquid containing water and mucus. The water in this liquid evaporates into the air in the nose and moistens it. Other cells have very tiny hair-like projections called cilia. The cilia are always moving, and particles of dust get trapped in them. Cilia are found all along the trachea and bronchi, too. They sweep the mucus, containing particles, up to the back of the throat, so bacteria and dust that it does not block the lungs. Epithelium, of the respiratory passages and digestive system, which secrete mucus. Cilia, tiny projections from some of the cells in respiratory passages. The lining of the respiratory passages, the cilia of many adjacent cells beat rhythmically in unison. The trachea. From the nose or mouth, the air passes into the windpipe or trachea. Just below the epiglottis is the voice box or larynx, containing vocal cords. Vocal cords can be tightened by muscles so that they make sounds when air passes over them. The trachea has rings of cartilage around it. As you breathe in and out, the pressure of the air in the trachea increases and decreases. The cartilage helps to prevent the trachea collapsing at times when the air pressure inside is lower than the pressure of the air outside it. The bronchi. The trachea goes down through the neck and into the thorax. In the thorax, the trachea divides into two branches called the right and left bronchi. One bronchus goes to each lung and then branches out into smaller tubes called bronchioles. Keywords Thorax, the chest, the part of the body from the neck down to the diaphragm. Bronchus, one of the two tubes that takes air from the trachea into the lungs. Bronchiole a small tube that takes air from a bronchus to every part of the lungs. Alveoli There are many tiny air sacs or alveoli at the end of each bronchiole. This is where gas exchange takes place. 
The walls of the alveoli are thin, allowing oxygen to diffuse into the blood and carbon dioxide to diffuse out. Alveoli have a large surface area for efficient gas exchange. Ventilation and gas exchange. Alveoli has an excellent transport system. Blood is constantly pumped to the lungs along the pulmonary artery. Carbon dioxide in the blood can diffuse into the air spaces in the alveoli, and oxygen can diffuse out to the blood. The blood is then taken back into thousands of capillaries, returning oxygenated blood to the rest of the body. They have a large surface area, in fact, the total surface area of all alveoli in your lungs is enormous over 100 square meters. They have a good supply of oxygen. Your breathing movements keep your lungs well supplied with oxygen. This is called ventilation. Keyword Ventilation, the movement of air into and out of lungs, by breathing movements. Comparing inspired and expired air. A comparison of inspired air and expired air shows differences in the percentage of oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. Inspired air has a higher oxygen percentage, 21%, compared to expired air, 16%. Expired air also contains water vapor, usually very high compared to inspired air. Breathing movements. To make air move in and out of the lungs, you must change the volume of your thorax. First, you make it large so that air is sucked in. Then you make it smaller again so that air is squeezed out. This is called breathing. Muscles in two parts of the body help you to breathe. Some of them, called the intercostal muscles, are between the ribs. The others are in the diaphragm a large sheet of muscle and elastic tissue which stretches across your body, underneath the lungs and heart. Breathing out, expiration. When breathing out, the muscles of the diaphragm relax. The diaphragm springs back up into its domed shape because it is made of elastic tissue. This decreases the volume in the thorax. The external intercostal muscles also relax, dropping the rib cage down again into its normal position. This also decreases the volume of the thorax. Usually, Relaxing the external intercostal muscles and the muscles of the diaphragm is all that is needed for breathing out. Sometimes, though, you breathe out more forcefully when coughing, for example. Then the internal intercostal muscles contract strongly, making the rib cage drop down even further. The muscles of the abdomen wall also contract, helping to squeeze extra air out of the thorax.